Grand Rising, my friends. What's up to this, to, to my peoples, for those who with me, those if you knew Ahalan, we are here looking today at the crypto market. It's trading sideways now for the past couple of days, a little bit of shade under. You know, look, let's be real. Let's be real, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not your advisor. We'll get to the positivity in a second. I won't forget it like I did and had to go midway, but, you know. We're going to look at the Bitcoin. <laughs> Bitcoin. Crypto market. And most times we go look at is how Bitcoin doing. Because if Bitcoin going up, everything else going up. I was about to, I'm going to talk a little later on about how Tezos and Cosmos have been performing, outperforming other coins in the, in the most recent days and what could possibly be the cause of that. But in reality, if Bitcoin going up, everything going up. If Bitcoin going down, everything going down. Now, there's going to be outliers, of course, but <laughs> outliers. <laughs> so anyway, Bitcoin at 48,572, Ethereum 3196, Cardano 2.88 cents, Binance Coin $4.84, XRP $1.14, Doge is at 27 cents, close to a shade under 28 cents. Solana 92, Polkadot 2578, Uniswap $26.41. Anything else we're looking at? Well, Tezos and Cosmos we're talking about. Tezos $6.01, which is up actually. More so than the other coin, 60% on a week. We have Cosmos at $21.36, is up in the past hour. So that's kind of what's where we at today with some of the coins. I'll chain link at twenty five dollars and fifty seven cents. I think chain link, its all time high was in the forty dollars. I'm not mistaken. Almost got close to fifty. So chain link is down a lot from its all time. So for those who like the chain link, chain link is a good protocol and a project. Speaking of which, we about that positivity here. And if there's someone in your life that you admire, respect, love, wish well for, and you want to give them a boost in their day, go ahead and say something nice about them down in the comment section and forward them this video. And, you know, I don't ask you all that. Subscribe and like. Well, I think people watch me now are already subscribed. So they thank you. I appreciate that. It's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> but, hey. Um, so... But I say something nice and send it to him and say, hey, go look down there and see I said something nice about you on the Internet, on the inner interwebs created by Al Gore. And the algorithm can start to be kind to your boy. And, hey, let's have some fun. And how much more fun can you then, then imagine in China building will study how to build a massive spacecraft over a half a mile long, one kilometer in length, an enormous. The Chinese government is inviting scientists to help build an enormous one kilometer long spacecraft that it wants to construct in orbit. The wild concept is to build a giant orbiting craft the size of 10 city blocks from components sent up by rockets one piece at a time. So th this is a more of kind of a get a study off their their look like they're casting proposals they're going to award is it 15 at two okay 2.3 million dollars i think that's one million 15 million one 2.3 million dollars to five projects for a concept five-year project to develop the concept so they you know this is a little bit long term but are we thinking like this are we about to ready to build and we'll talk about that at some point the giant machines you can build in space such as uh what are those are they max off wheels i can't remember the name but it's a maxwell maxwell wheels maxwell max off maxwell wheels 
it's what uh, Jeff Bezos sees as how humanity can survive in space in terms of these big, giant, cylindrical, spinning constructions that will then have kind of a, a gravity uh, based on centrifugal force. I think not just centrifugal, it's not centrifuge. Centrifugal or centrifuge. But anyway, that's one idea, and I think it may be Maxwell, but I may be mistaken. I'll look it up after this. The other, um, one of the big concepts that I love to think about is Dyson spheres, where we're able to construct, ignore, enormous constructs around our sun and able to collect energy from that and able to then power. That changes us into a, uh, like a level two, level three society. But that's a story for another day and some great people already here on YouTube who talks about that and it's also fascinating. The So, yeah, that's what they're doing. They're looking at trying to build a big giant, big one kilometer big giant space building. I don't know. It's not a ship. It's not a, I mean, you can call it a station. I guess that's what the technical terms of center point this is in Star Wars. Now I'm thinking of it to my head that the, the big giant constructs in there, like the Death Star or center point station are considered space stations. And they're almost, a, you know, it could be the size of moons or uh darn near continent. So, OK, space station, big giant one kilometer space station. I think we need to step it up, America. Speaking of which. Three top AI stocks to buy right now. Now, I'm not recommending, like I said, I'm not your advisor and these and that, like, oh, don't go about to buy these. But I just want you thinking, like, okay, let's look at what some article just came up with, you know, and start teasing it out to see does it make sense or not make sense. And we got to go into, you know, reading all in depth and breaking down just, you know, the big overview of how to start thinking through some of these. And, and at some point when we do deep dives, then we'll take stuff and, and do a more deep dive and a breakdown for each one. But for now, this is more light and fluffy and go be more fun than that. So they're looking at three companies here, Intel, IBM and Micron. Uh, and their artificial intelligence is expected to continue evolving and transforming the way businesses work. Many industries have already benefited from implementing AI in their business processes. For example, the introduction of virtual shopping assistants and chatbots has helped e-commerce companies offer a better experience to their customers. Okay, we know this. Given the backdrop, we think it's wise to bet on quality AI stocks. The three companies we just talked about, Intel, IBM, and Micron. Talked about their fundamentals, and we we're going to let's look at IBM. So IBM, they have integrated solutions, services with clouds, global technologies, finances, you know, all these buzzwords, blah, 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 and AI solutions. They, on August 3rd, announced a collaboration with Black and Vetch to jointly market assets, performance management, APM solutions, including remote monitoring technologies that combine, you know, like how, you know how we like that sound, real-time data analytics with AI to help customers keep equipment assets running at peak performance and reliability. Now, if we're talking about for things like the Boston Dynamic Future uh, uh, robots that are out there, or even a spot that's out there now, the, the robotics like the Tesla bot or the other robotic companies, I think Sarcos is one that is creating robotics, Tag, keeping track of them, tagging them, and re referring information back. Remember, all this stuff is going to be important. One of the other companies, Micron, is do storage, data storage. And so all that cloud information needs to stay somewhere in these big servers. So it's different ways to think about how to make money with these technologies instead of just like, oh, wow, the AI coming. Like, oh, somebody is working on it, invested money in it, and when they pop, they're going to get paid, and why not you as well? So you putting five, ten dollars a month into IBM stock or Intel stock or Micron stock or any company in the video that you find near if you or you want to now that the Chinese market down, you think this is just manipulation? They'll be back at some point, and Tencent, Alibaba, and Baidu. These are other companies that are investing heavily. Google and in artificial intelligence. Just pieces, you know, you know, 
it, it's kind of thought of like, okay, I'm gonna run a race, but I expect to get to the. Most people are like, oh, okay, I just want to jump straight to the finish line and win. And it's like that's not how it works. You gotta take steps. You gotta practice. You gotta run. You will lose some, but if you keep running, eventually you'll win some races. And by the time you're in it, you'll be in great shape and somebody who who won races. And I'm just blabbering on right now. So. Yesterday, I brought a little bit about securities and commodities. Let's just get to the actual definitions before we move on so that we keep those in our heads. What are exactly our securities? According to Google, securities are fungible and tradable financial instruments used to raise capital in public and private markets. So what are fungible and tradable financial? Fungible means they can be interchanged. So when you hear something like non-fungible tokens, non uh, the non-fungible Tokens, that mean that thing is specific and unique on the blockchain for itself. There's nothing exactly like that. That one is unique and can be verified. So fungible mean that there can be interchanged. And, and, and so one is equivalent to another. So if I got a stock and I say, trade me your stock, your Intel stock, I have a Tesla stock and you have a Tesla stock or Intel stock and an Intel stock and you trade me, they're exactly the same. It's not like, oh, my Intel stock or my Apple or Amazon stock versus your Apple or Amazon stock is more valuable or different. Unless you get into like some stocks have like different classes in amongst themselves. So for example, not going down a rabbit hole with this because there's always a, a caveat. Some a company will come out and say, hey, our investors who've been invested privately, they got A class stock to have these certain privileges and everybody else can buy B class stocks with these privileges. And then we may have these C's that's for something else. But you get that up front, you know what you're buying. That's amongst itself, not compared to trading um, with other people or, or, or outside of their company and for the importance it means in there. So, But in terms of what we're talking about, one is equivalent to the other, okay? Like a dollar bill. There are primarily three types of securities. Equity, which pr provides... Ownership rights to holders, like stocks, debt, essentially loans repaid with periodic payments, bonds, and hybrids, which combine aspects of debt and equity. So that's what a security is, right? A commodity is a basic good used as an input in the production, is a basic good used as an input in the production of good and services. That means companies use commodities in a manufacturing process to turn them into everyday goods. The most common commodities include copper, crude oil, wheat, coffee, beans, and gold. Gold is a commodity as well. And that's why Bitcoin is considered a commodity because it's seen as a good, basic good, used as an input in the production of goods and services. So let's talk about some other dividends. So, you know, we talked about the dividend kings and aristocrats and why it's important to. In a diversified now, he's going to be different ways. And we'll talk about this on the deep dive of investing at some point. Do I. Put all my eggs in one basket or do I spread out my risk amongst other things? And so I believe it's more of a. It's like if you're younger and you don't have much and you really believe in something and, you you know, like if I was in my early 20s now and, I, and it was last year and I was just seeing how Cardano was and just say I'm putting all my little bit of money, my $500 in Cardano, right? It, it, to see the long-term game, if, if I'm like 18, 19, 20, to say, okay, well, let me just put you know, $10 in Apple, $10 in Amazon, $10 in Netflix, the FANG stocks, um, some Google, you know, if I, or, you know, I could just spread that out. And that, you know, it's kind of the option you have, right? When you think about it, do I spread out little amounts amongst these proven thoroughbreds or say, let me take a long shot on something that's more not as proven. But as you get older, you realize that or I just say, even if that young point, so say, okay, I put in 500, it went up to 5,000. Then at that point, I take out maybe more than half, even if I say, okay, I, I, I trust that, so I'll leave 1,000 in, but 4,000 out. Now I'll spread that 4,000 out, which is profit from 
a something that I made money off of. And it could be even smaller. I could just go to a thousand and just take out um two fifty, I mean take out uh seven hundred and fifty dollars and say, okay, I'll leave the rest of it in Cardano because now I paid for more of it. I paid for it, but I'm gonna take this money and now spread it out in, you know, maybe an old realty uh realty in- income, which is a a, a RET, an R E T. I'll put some money in there. I'll put some money in um just thinking of Airbnb or Uber, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm just naming things just to not always say the same things over and over again. Um, so it makes sense to do a bit of both, in other words. So in times you're going to realize and say, hey, I really see something that I really believe in is going to go. And I think I'm in at a good time and you have the means and the and the and the way to don't so yeah don't start selling a bunch of stuff to do this i'm just it, there'll be times in your life where it'll make sense to take what you have and push it towards one direction and there'll be times where you say oh i have this you know what should i do with this let me and whenever that's the question i say okay well let me just spread it out you know etfs you can just always buy well, i could buy into the S&P 500, I can buy into the total stock market in index. And so these are the kind of strategies you want to have. So dividend stocks is always a great, great strategy, even if you buy ETF of dividend stocks. You know, Johnson & Johnson is a dividend king elite group of S&P 500 members. But, you know, remember, that's the aristocrats. That is and that. So what is this person talking about? Maybe it's also a king and an aristocrat. I have to take a look at Johnson & Johnson and S&P 500. Because dividend kings is just any company that has been increasing their dividend payout for the past 50 years. What it says here, but it says that it's not necessarily S&P 500 members that have done that. But that's okay, guys. Uh, da, da. So Johnson Johnson is a good company. They continue to do things. They, you know, people... You, what can you say? They about to start passing out the booster shots for their COVID-19 vaccine. Johnson & Johnson, like I said, not your, not your advisor. Nobody can steal that. I'm going to um, make a shirt with nachos and something else on there, but saying not your advisor. And I, I ain't your advisor. <laughs> Brookfield Renewable, Renewable Energy Company. They're increasing theirs. It depends how much you feel about going into energy. If you care about, like we, I was discussing a little bit yesterday, if it's uh, renewable versus non-renewable sources. But if you do, this is important. You can see there's also renewable company, renewable energy companies that pay good dividends. What about the dividends? Since 2000, Brookfield Renewable has increased its distribution by a compound annual growth rate of around 6%. Awesome. Its dividend yield now stands at a little under 3%, but the company expects to increase the distribution by 5 to 9% per year. So, and, and those sound like small numbers, but compound interest is the eighth wonder of the universe, according to Albert Einstein, or has been at least attributed a statement to him. Or some similar loan. I may have paraphrased it. Innovative Industrial Properties is a company that it is a it is a rent a real estate investment trust that finds real estate for medical cannabis operators. Provides real estate capital to medical cannabis operators. So some people may have a problem with that. But if you think that this is a field that is going to grow, which I do in the United States of America, let alone wherever else in the world because of changing laws and attitudes towards medicinal cannabis, recreational cannabis, the psychedelic medications that are, are going to be used for a lot of mental health that we kind of been cheated out of progress for years because of, you know, we would probably do a deep dive on that, but that's be more conspiracy related. As you can imagine, I doubt someone comes on ex exactly tell you why they suppressed this information for years. But so they also pay a and, and remember, as a rent, they must distribute at least 90 percent of its taxable income to shareholders in the form of dividends. That's why rents are very 
good investment properties if you want to do real estate, but not do real estate. Tezos and Cosmos rally as wider crypto market stagnates. Yeah, I would say the market is stagnant a little bit. So, you know, the other day I was saying, why is Tezos popping like this? And so it appears that it's an open source proof of stake, which is good, like Cardano and Ethereum will be at some point. Probably, I don't know if Bitcoin will ever be. I don't know. That's speculation land. I'm not. I feel like doing that right now. I'll be think about that. Um, but it had a recent upgrade this month. Reduces block times from 60 seconds to 30 seconds and reduce gas consumption and smart contracts. If I'm not mistaken, Tezos is a uh, ER, ERC20 token, but I have to double check. It meaning it's built off of the Ethereum blockchain. Tezos began to rally earlier this week with the news that its blockchain had attracted institutional interest. Swiss business to business bank Incor is collaborating with Swiss IT consultant firm Enact, Enacta. Enacta? and digital asset manager Crypto Finance AG to develop a Tezos token standard for European banks to mint their own digital assets. So maybe that's why Tezos is popping. Cosmos is surging. Coincided the launch of a cross-chain definance interface called Emirates on August 18th. More recently, Cosmos opened a bridge with the Ethereum network, the integration of SIF chain, a decentralized exchange built on Cosmos. With the inner blockchain communication protocol now enables trade between the Cosmos and Ethereum networks for the first time. So that gives you kind of a good reason why both of those are doing much better. But of course, because of this, the IMF is deeply, deeply concerned about because we're here to protect you about countries making Bitcoin legal tender. In a tweet, they said crypto assets like Bitcoins come with substantial risk, such as. I'll wait. Making them equivalent to a national currency is an inadvisable shortcut. Uh oh, oh, look at the oh, oh, look at I like the pretty picture that IMF put up, though. For one thing, it appears the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. So if you want some monies, you know, you go go with your hand in your hat begging for monies. Then you got to come to them. But guess what? If you don't need money. You think they want you out here not needing their money? You think the IMF wants you financially secure where there's no need for International Monetary Fund because we now have pushed everyone into a state of abundance? Does that sound like something the IMF wants for us as citizens of this planet? It's just a little blue ball flowing through space. For one thing, it appears the IMF is concerned about the growing number of countries such as El Salvador, recognizing Bitcoin as their national currency and how this may affect their worldwide operations. Recently, Honduras installed its first crypto ATM, which we'll be talking about next, while Cuba has become the latest country to recognize and regulate cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin. In recognizing cryptocurrency, Cuba may be able to bypass the United States embargo. Ho, 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 ho! Do, 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 do. I ran bad not North Korea bad not do that as well. No. I'm sorry if I'm yelling in your ears. This is, as you can understand, slightly frustrating to someone who just wants everyone, understands that the creator of all of this wants us to all to be happy, content. That there's abundance, there's more than enough for us to share and not fight over land and religion. I think people fight over spirituality. Land, religion, resources, perceived slights. But, hey, uh, which prohibits the island's international commerce and remittances. So remittances is a big thing, and that's where our next story and our final story for the day um, we we'll talk about uh, what has been happening with buying Bitcoin. Ether just got easier in Honduras with cryptocurrency ATM. 
Cryptocurrency ATM launched this week in Honduras, Reuters reported Friday. According to the reports, this is the first cryptocurrency ATM in the country. It allows users to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum using the local Olympiad currency. Y'all know what what I say. I butcher things. Get with the program. And it's some, it's some, we get down to this capital. We are not trying that. I mean, yeah, unless we y'all just want to uh, play a drinking game in the morning time, whatever you watch these videos that um, make a fun of me, make a fun of me. The Republic of Honduras is a country in Central America. It borders El Salvador. The country would pass a law making Bitcoin legal tender alongside the U.S. dollar. The law is set to go in effect on September 7th. Cryptocurrency ATM in Honduras, locally called Le, Bic Le Bitcoin Era, was installed in an office tower in the capital of Tigualagalapa. Tigu? No, that's Tigu. 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 I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to say it, y'all. I'm not trying to make fun. I'm trying to. Respect them by learning it and doing it correctly. By Honduras firm TGU Consultant Group. All right. So before he said, look, to get crypto there, you had to do a peer to peer looking for someone who was willing to do it. Meeting person carrying X amount of money on you, which is very inconvenient and dangerous given the environments in Honduras. Hey, it was dangerous in some parts of America as well. So, you know, yeah, we don't want to be doing that out there. Hey, I got. I got two thousand on me. Let me get that. Let me get that, that that private key. Send this to this address. I'll confirm it. We're gonna have to wait thirty minutes for the confirmation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you go cover. You go cover the the transaction fee. I got it. Was, I, I, I was supposed to get like two thousand of it. That took, hey, look, the current rate right now is forty eight. Oh, 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 it went down to forty. So you know. Hey, the, we don't need to be on the streets doing that. We need to, we need to be quick. Just like beep, 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 boom. So they have a crypto. So, and my point of this bringing up, even though they mentioned another story, everybody, you know, has been talking about it. Like it seems like, oh well, and it is to me the reason why it's big, why it's important for us in our journey here, of our movement to get that chattel, to get that paper. To come up on that, you know what I mean. Is that is it is it too late to get Bitcoin? They just now put an ATM, and and, and this is just in Honduras. There's plenty of other places, and because you can't think of this as just an American thing. And I think some people get in that mindset, or the people I'm around, people around don't talk about it, or it, well, people here already been getting paid. I see it's Bitcoin millionaires. This is going to affect everybody in life. I'm not even going to, you know, those stories or I don't know how I feel about those. Bitcoin would happen in Afghanistan would not be happening if Bitcoin was if they had Bitcoin right now. I, I'm like, nah, I don't think the religious zealots care about the blockchain. They don't care about money, do you money? Nah, they don't care about American money dollars. You think or, or whatever you want to bring over there. Russian rubles. They. Mm -mm. That's a transactional society as it was. What you got? Uh, we're going to take from you, you know, livestock, um, children, women, uh, girls, boys, guns. We, we talk about that on here, too. Guns are a good investment, a great investment. In terms of having ammunition, magazines, lower receivers, completed guns themselves. They, you know, like pain. I'm um, sorry, paintings like art, precious metals. There's a lot of ways we can think about how we can. Make ourselves safe and also make ourselves financially secure in the future. So the, the reason why I thought this was and I, you know, put it on. But it was every I wasn't even go talk about this one Bitcoin ATM and Ethereum in uh, Honduras, but. I thought about it and said, you know what? For everybody who's sitting around thinking like, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. They happy for getting one now. With that said, 
I love you. You love yourself. God loves us. And that's all that matters.